Okay, so here we are at the fantastic Swannington Incline, an absolutely brilliant piece of local Leicestershire history this is, it really is. So the Incline was opened in 1832 and it formed part of the famous Leicester to Swannington Railway, which was the first steam operated railway of its kind in the English Midlands. And it was built solely for the purpose of transporting coal from the bottom of the Incline at the Swannington and Clawton pits to the town of Leicester. And I say town of Leicester because it wasn't given city status, I think, until around about 1919. But Robin St Robert Stevenson faced a huge task when he built this railway, and that was this incline itself. Because the mines are so low compared to the top of the incline, there was no steam locomotive available with any power whatsoever to haul coal from the bottom to the top. So how did he do it? Well, I'll show you. I think what fascinates me more than anything when I visit these sites is the actual earthworks that have taken place and the Swannington Incline is no different. You know, here we have a really impressive cutting here that uh, goes pretty much all the way to the top of the incline near where the engine house was. But I think it's very easy sometimes when we talk about the building of these places, we often give all the credit to the people that design them, you know, the Brunels, the Stevensons and the Thomas Telfords of uh, back in the day civil engineering projects. And I'm not taking anything away from those men, by the way. These were incredibly gifted men and very creative men and that could have come down here in Robert Stevenson's case, surveyed it, made calculations, gone back to an office and drawn all the plans up. But then the plans would have been passed to contractors that would have brought armies of men with them known as navvies that dug all this out with no more than pickaxes, shovels, wheelbarrows, maybe explosives as well. There is evidence of quite a bit of rock in this steep cutting actually, so maybe explosives would have been used. But you know, we always give the credit to the designers, but they didn't physically build these railways and canals. It was the navvies. And you know, Navvies had a bad reputation, didn't they, for being drunkards and rioters. And to be fair, after hand digging down here all day, I think I'd fancy a, an ice cold beer at the end of the day. I think something else that's quite important to note when we think about the railways is another great age that came before the 1800s when all these railways were built. And that is the great cathedral age that went on a good seven or eight hundred years before the railway age. And I'm sorry if you can hear a loud noise in the background as a farmer working hard on a tractor just uh, at the top of the uh, cut in there. But, um, you know, the great age of the cathedrals. And I'm not a religious man by any stretch of the imagination, but I really do appreciate the cathedrals. But when we think about cathedral building, you know, a lot of the time, you know, the really impressive, humongous cathedrals, such as Lincoln Cathedral and York Minster, took the best part of 100 years to build. And I'm not taking anything away from that. But then when we think about the railway age, and techniques in building embankments, etc., hadn't really changed much in 700 years. Technology hadn't really moved forward, had it? And when you take into account that a cathedral took the best part of 100 years, and then take into account that the railways, you know, we laid 20,000 miles of track over the best part of 80 years, all with shovels, explosives, wheelbarrows, and muscle power, that really is impressive, to be fair, isn't it? So when they finally finished mining at the bottom of the incline at Swannington and Culloughton, they faced another problem, because what they did, they opened more mines in Colville. Now, the problem with the abandoned mines down at the bottom of the incline was they started filling with water quite rapidly. And what they found, when they sunk pits in Colville, they were suffering water problems from the existing mines down at the bottom of the incline. So what they did, the actual Calcutta mine, which I'll try and show you a little bit later in the video at the end, they turned the shaft into a, a sump hole, if you want to call it that, and they fitted a pump there. Now, just at the top of the incline near where the engine house would have been that worked the incline, is this impressive piece of kit that's been lovingly restored and I thought this was actually part of the engine house the first time I ever seen it. 
but I saw a little video online just recently where I think one of the volunteers that helps out down here, he actually talks about this. And what this did, the actual rods that would have gone into the water deep in the shaft that drew the water up, this mechanism actually pulled those rods out when they needed to uh, do maintenance work on the rods. So yeah, an absolutely fascinating piece of uh, machinery this is. And uh, well done to the people that restored it as well. Looks fantastic. Right then, so this is all that remains of the former Swannington Incline engine house. And although it was pretty much demolished in the 1940s after they didn't need it anymore, the foundation remains. And I think there's been a lot of repointing works done on here in the last 30 years to get this in a, a reasonable condition. But uh, if we have a look around it, we can actually get a sense of how the incline actually operated. So as you can see there in front of you, there are two gate posts. And just beyond the gate post is where the Swannington incline actually started. The actual gradient for the incline was 1 in 17. So there was absolutely no chance that uh, steam locomotives would have uh, hauled coal up a slope like that. They might have actually struggled on their own to get up a, a 1 in 17 slope, to be fair. And as luck would have it here as well, just beyond this gate, as you can see, there is still some railway line left intact. And that's really good because that helps us understand how this system works. We can quite clearly see that the railway line would have come straight through here and headed down to the uh, incline. But what's really good here is we can really get a sense of how it all worked. So we've got the actual railway line that would have come through here and at this point somewhere in this vicinity here between the two rails would have been a drum powered by a, a steam engine in the engine house that uh, Robert Stevenson designed and on the drum itself wound around it was a, roughly around about half a mile's worth of rope and the actual rope itself was in a like a roller system that ran between the two lines and just beyond the actual railway lines near where I'm parked actually I think just the other side of Spring Lane was where the, the, uh, the, the coal wagons were actually attached to the steam locomotives and then taken on to the next port of coal. So when they finally finished extracting coal from the mines of Swannington and Culloughton of course as I mentioned earlier they started other mines in Coalville but the problem that they had was the flooding and of course Calcutta mine just down at the bottom of the incline there was converted into a pumping station which gave the Swannington Incline engine house a new lease of life because they still needed to get coal down to the pumping station to feed the pump, which was steam driven. And it was actually still in use up until the 1940s, this was. But then, of course, came the end of uh, using the steam engine method and then it was converted to electricity. And what I think really is great about the Swannington Incline is that it's looked after on a regular basis. There's actually uh, volunteers that look after the place. The site was actually purchased, I think, in the 1980s or early 1990s, I'm not quite sure. And when the actual line became derelict, I think, in the 1940s, it was used as a dumping ground, I think. And it really is great what they've done down here. You know, they come down here, they cut the grass, they look after the place, they make sure everything's safe and sound. And they've actually put some in, you know, really good information boards up as well down here. And as you can see there, there's actually a, there's a bridge that, that uh, I'll share a picture of in a second. But uh, that is actually a occupational bridge purely to let the, uh, the cattle roam about freely when this was all constructed. And as you can see here, the actual incline, it levels off. That's heading towards the Calcutta mine and the uh, Culloughton mines. But yeah, really is brilliant that people use their spare time to look after these places. So people like me and you can come and have a look. Really do appreciate that. You know, when you think about the age of mining for coal, you usually think typically around the uh, 17, 1800s mark, don't you? But I found it quite interesting earlier because what the people have done here that volunteer, they've built these little brick stanchions and put information plaques on top of them. And I was looking at one of the information plaques earlier and it said that there's evidence in this area of coal mining going back as far as the early uh, 13th century. Now that really did surprise me. 
Okay, so the impressive structure that I hope you can see in this poor light in front of you there is actually what remains of the former Calcutta mine. And of course, mining operations ceased in the, the 1870s and it was turned into a pumping station. And it's great to see it all fully intact still. And uh, in 2020, these days, it serves as a uh, storage facility. But it's absolutely fantastic to still see it here. Okay, so that concludes our explore of the fantastic Swannington Incline. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. I've been gate crashed by a farmer with his tractor. That's all I've heard for the last few scenes that I've recorded, but hopefully it's not been too loud. Anyway, I'll see you soon at the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.